struggling with the boss, you've come to the right place. Timestamps in the description, bosses are shown in the typical order you would encounter them in, obligatory spoiler warning, let's get started. Starman Jr. You literally cannot lose unless you are level 12 and remove Buzz Buzz's shields. Frank Fly. If you're level 8, one PSI Rockin' will do the trick. If you're level 6 or 7, the biggest advice I can give is to not be greedy, and this applies for all early game bosses. If you're below 30 HP, heal. Do not test your luck, it will not pay off. If you're below level 6, I recommend fighting the sharks until you are level 6. Make sure you have as many hamburgers as possible and are equipped with the best equipment you can find at the drugstore along with the Mr. Baseball cap. Do not buy the yo-yo. It has a miss rate of 18.75%. Frankie Stein Mark II. Frank's second phase, Frankie Stein only attacks every other turn, starting with his second turn. Use the first turn to heal if you need to, then defend or heal every turn he attacks, and attack every turn he generates a burst of steam, which does nothing. Keep your HP above 45 whenever possible. Titanic Ant. Keep in mind that you can respawn the magic butterfly by exiting and re-entering the area it is in. Open up with PSI Rockin' immediately to get rid of his cronies. After that, spam as much Rockin' as you can and bash until it's over. Use hamburgers instead of life up to heal, and keep your HP above 50 when possible. If you don't have Rockin', I'd highly recommend grinding until you do. The Cops. Try to use as little PSI as possible, meaning only use hamburgers to heal. Keep your HP above 30 when possible and simply continue bashing whenever you can. Keep in mind that the fifth cop runs away, so you only have to fight four of these guys. Captain Strong. This is where you unleash all your PSI. Two shots of rockin' should do the trick, and keep your HP above 50 whenever possible. He can dish out a lot of damage. Everdread. If you're having trouble with Everdread, chances are you're simply underleveled. A few bashes should do the trick, but stack up on hamburgers and keep your HP above 50 if you need to. Do not buy the Slingshot. It has a miss rate of 18.75%. Stick with the T-Ball bat for now. The Hard Hat in Peace Forest Valley is also a very good boost to your defense, should you need it. Mr. Carpainter. If he's killing you before the fight even starts, you need to find and talk to Paula first. If you keep your HP above 40, you should have no problem fighting him. He's also quite weak to paralysis if you're still having trouble. Mondo Mole. Being merely the fourth strongest mole, he is incredibly weak to paralysis. Use it on your opening turn to render him useless for the rest of the fight. Ideally, Paula should be alive at the end of this fight so she can get an easy EXP boost. Worthless protoplasm. Pray to the RNG gods. Quick note, if you haven't already, grab the broken pipe in Dr. Andernot's lab. It can be an extremely useful item later on, specifically when Jeff's IQ becomes at least 30 and he turns it into the shield killer. Boogie Tent. Bottle rockets can do insane amounts of damage here if you have the money, but I'd highly recommend saving the big bottle rocket for later. Make sure you have everyone equipped with the latest equipment and have Paula use her strongest PSI fire as the tent is quite weak to it. Try your best to keep Jeff and Paula alive, as the EXP is crucial when they're at these low levels. Don't forget to grab the fly honey after you're done. Mini Barf. Bash as much as possible before he burps in your face. After everyone is crying, spam your strongest PSI attacks. Quick note, Saturn Valley has great defensive items. Go buy them. Do not buy the slingshot, or any slingshot for that matter. They all have a horrendous accuracy rate. Master Belch. Open up by using the jar of fly honey, then bash away. Don't waste any resources on this guy other than the occasional heal for nausea if you need to. Trillionage Sprout. This is one of the tougher bosses in the game, so use your big bottle rocket from earlier and any other bottle rockets you can afford here. Have Paula use her strongest PSI fire, and Ness use his strongest rockin' until they are mushroomized. Using PSI while mushroomized is extremely risky as it's entirely possible for the move to land a devastating blow to your own party members. If you become Diamondize, you are essentially knocked out unless another member can use a cup of life noodles. Guardian Diggers. Ideally, Paula should be level 31 or higher before fighting one of these guys, but it's definitely not necessary. The Digger, being the third strongest, of course has the power shield, meaning the first three physical attacks will be reflected back at half damage. It's best to simply have Ness and Jeff defend while Paula uses PSI Freeze Gamma. Follow up with a Freeze Alpha if needed. Here's a recommended route through the caves from Starman.net if you need it. Department Store Spook. Make sure you get equipped with the best equipment and buy as many bottle rockets as you can before the store shuts down. Do not buy the yo-yo. It has the same accuracy rate as the slingshot. Once you get to the fight, simply unleash your most powerful PSI attacks and bottle rockets. The hardest part of this fight is managing your resources when fighting the enemies before it. Evil Mani Mani. Ideally, you should grab some bottle rockets before entering Moonside. Have Ness equip the Night Pendant before entering this fight. After encountering it, spam your most powerful PSI attacks and bottle rockets. Try to keep your HP above 100. Quick note, grab the Neutralizer and the Monkey Cave. It is well worth the detour and can be an extremely useful tool in future boss fights. Clumsy Robot. This fight is rude. The bologna sandwich is full of bologna. It doesn't actually do anything. Open up with Neutralizer and use your most powerful attacks. 
Keep in mind that bottle rockets don't work here. Shroom! You can try your luck with PSI Flash Beta, it's possible to one-shot this enemy with it. If that doesn't work, have Ness use PSI Rockin, Paula use her strongest PSI Fire or Freeze, and Jeff use his strongest bottle rockets. Mushroomization is definitely a threat here, so if a member gets inflicted with it, have them simply attack normally or defend. Plague Rat of Doom. <laughs> this boss is very weak to PSI Fire and Freeze, so having Paula use it as much as possible in conjunction with bottle rockets and PSI Rockin should have the rat down in no time. Keep your HP above 100, as he has a high chance of getting a smash attack. Make sure to grab the broken bazooka on your way out, as it will become one of Jeff's most powerful weapons. Thunder and Storm. Give the Franklin badge to your most valuable party member, who is likely Paula at this point, in order to protect them as much as possible. Simply unleash your most powerful PSI attacks and bottle rockets to fail the duo in no time. Kraken. A reasonably difficult fight, this is another one where you don't want to get too greedy. Have Paula and Pooh spam PSI Freeze, Ness spam Rocket, and Jeff spam his various array of explosives. Keep the Franklin badge on Paula just in case. Guardian General. More of a mini boss, but just as dangerous as a regular boss, have Paula use PSI PSI Fire or Freeze, and Pooh use PSI Freeze, while Ness and Jeff use their physical attacks or any PSI or explosives if absolutely necessary. Master Barf. This is an extremely easy fight if you have multi-bottle rockets, as just one will do the trick. Otherwise, use normal attacks until your party members start crying, then have them use their most powerful PSI attacks. Keep your HP above 110 as much as possible. Do not equip the Casey Bat. It misses 75% of the time and is not worth the 125 offense buff. Starman DX. Immediately use a multi-bottle rocket if you have one. Otherwise, this fight can be very tough. Do not underestimate it. Open up with Jeff using the Neutralizer to get rid of the Starman's PSI shield. Have everyone else use standard attacks until the shield is gone. Once the shield is gone, have Ness, Pooh, and Jeff use the most powerful attacks while Paula uses PSI Shield Sigma in order to prepare for a potential Starstorm Alpha from the Starman. The Broken Bazooka should be fixed by now, and it's a worthy alternative to bottle rockets if you don't have any. Repeat this process until the battle is over. Ignore any other Starman the leader summons, as they will disappear once the main daddy is defeated. Electro Spectre. Equip Paula with the Franklin badge. Use the Neutralizer to get rid of the Psychic Shield, then use a variety of Fire, Freeze, Rockin', Starstorm, and Battle Rockets to make quick work of it. Carbon Dog. By far the hardest boss in the game, give Ness, Jeff, and Paula the Knight Pendant, Sea Pendant, or any Star Pendants if you have some. Use your most powerful PSI attacks, but save some PP for the second phase. Whatever you do, do not use multi-Bottle Rockets. It will one-shot Carbon Dog, yes, but the Diamond Dog will reflect the attack right back at you, instantly killing Jeff. Diamond Dog. Open up by healing any reflective damage done, then use Jeff's Neutralizer to get rid of the shield. Afterwards, go absolutely ham and defeat this beast as fast as possible. Multi-bother rockets along with PSI Freeze, Fire, Star Storm, and Rockin' are lifesavers here. Quick note, make sure Ness has a Knight Pendant, Sea Pendant, or Star Pendant equipped before grabbing the final memory. This is because the next boss has access to a form of PSI Flash, and you likely want protection against it. If you're unable to get one of these equipped, the Earth Pendants found in Magikant are the best alternative. Ness's Nightmare is one of the toughest bosses in the game and has access to PSI Flash. You should absolutely make sure Ness is equipped with a Knight Pendant, Sea Pendant, or Star Pendant to make sure you don't get randomly screwed over with an insta-kill. The best strategy for this fight is to wait until the Nightmare runs out of PP. To do so, simply defend and heal until it is unable to cast any PSI. Ness has a lot of HP by this point and should be able to take multiple mortal damages. That being said, don't get greedy as you shouldn't have to conserve your PP too much and losing the fight will cost you a lot of time. After the stat you cannot cast any PSI, simply use auto fight. You're out of danger once it runs out of PP. Stock up. You are about to enter the point of no return. Here's the best equipment for each party member if you feel the need to upgrade, excluding one out of 128 exclusive items. As for your inventory, buy as many bottle rockets, cups of life noodles, horns of life, and teddy bears as possible. Final spoiler warning. Final boss is next. Heavily armed Pokey and Gygus 1. Do not attack Gygus. He will reflect all of your attacks and is invincible in this phase. Your target is Pokey. Open up with Paula using PSI Shield Sigma to protect against any rockets from Gygus, have Ness use Brain Shock and Paralysis on Pokey until both succeed, and have Jeff use Bottle Rockets while Pooh uses PSI Freeze. Have Paula refresh the shields as necessary, but otherwise have Ness use normal bash attacks, Paula and Pooh use PSI Freeze, and Jeff use Bottle Rockets and a heavy bazooka. Keep your HP above 200 as much as possible and continue dishing out these moves until Pokey falls. Gygus 2. Go ham with your most powerful PSI 
ASI attacks. Except when healing, have Ness use Rock and Omega, Paula use Freeze Omega, and Pooh use Star Storm Omega. Bottle Rockets don't work on Gigas, so have Jeff use the Heavy Bazooka. You want this phase to be over as fast as possible. Gigas 3. Your only focus should be keeping Paula alive at all costs, as no attacks will have an impact. This is the last fight in the game, so there's no shame in using all of your items. Have Paula use the Prey Command a total of 9 times in order to finish this masterpiece of a finale. Hey, yeah, I appreciate you watching this until the end. If this video helped you at all, make sure to let me know by leaving a like or commenting down below. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments as well. I'll answer them as soon as I can. If you want more Earthbound content, make sure to subscribe as more is on the way, and thank you for watching, I hope you have a fantastic day, and remember, my fellow Starmen, to never underestimate yourselves.